the agenda. Oh, Chief Crosso, you're first. Now, what are you here on time, right? It is the ninth. Jeez. Who has fire department? That, oh, you. that would be I. <coughs> I had an opportunity to meet with uh, Chief Crosso, go over his budget, um, and you're also going to talk about some of the items on the safety complex uh, right, as, well. as well. Right, um, You know, the only two items to Good point out in, in in the chief's budget here is in the salary line items we've talked about uh, at a couple of our meetings um, we are starting to see the um, impact of the declining safer grant uh, contribution so where the town is picking up more of the cost of the salaries of the four um, staff members that were added as part of that um, uh, program there um, and in the purchase of services, it's generally a level funded uh, area. There are some uh, items towards the bottom that are related to new reporting software that are more like one-time items to, uh, to integrate some of the new reporting software in there. Otherwise, it's generally a, a level funded uh, budget. Uh, same thing on, on the uh, supply side there. There are some snow change and a one-time purchase of uh, software from last year have come out. Uh, one line, on, two line items got rolled into one, uh, but other than that, it's generally a, uh, a level funded budget. And with that, Chief, if there's anything that, that you uh, wanted to point out, uh, no, I'll, I'll expand a little bit further on the uh, the safer grant, um, just for purposes of clarification. So, the grant runs on a calendar year, as opposed oh. to a fiscal year. So, we're f we're in year two of the grant now which means july 1st our um i'm sorry which means january 1st next year january 1st of 20 the uh, percentage will change from 75 percent grant funded to 35 percent grant funded the first two years were 75 percent the last year is 35 percent so we'll have a half a year at 75 percent and a half a year at 35 percent and that's that's representative of, of the majority of the, the salary increase in addition to contractual obligations. Questions? This could be a new record. A big budget like this? <laughs> oh, no, give me a second. Okay. <laughs> I just got here. Apologies. Now, we, okay, I'll... I'll jump in then then you while you uh, yeah, think about things so even with the addition of four men or people sorry people employees the overtime still go went up yeah, and again a lot of that has that's that's the contractual part of that so oh, when okay. I do the budget for the overtime the the numbers went the actual hours went down but oh, because of the cost increases the numbers went up and what year are you in your contract with the uh, we just signed. You just signed too. Uh, and it's good through June 30th, 2021. Okay. And to give Joni another second, uh, we did talk about staffing. So, uh, in in short, you are at full staff. You may have one or two positions that that change out, but you're you, you don't have a, a a host of vacancies that you're trying to fill at this. We point. actually have one vac one full time vacancy at, right now that we're getting ready to fill. It was a. Uh, um, it was actually one of the safer positions who uh, left to go to another department. I had a question earlier. When you looking to fill those positions, you know, your predecessors had a priority on making sure they were firefighter paramedics mm -hmm. they were hiring. Is that still true? In so we ran into a problem with that when we had advertised uh, in July of seventeen um, when we were. Originally awarded the grant, we advertised in July for paramedics. We didn't get a, a good qualified pool of applicants. We advertised again in October and ran into the same situation. The Board of Selectmen agreed to relax those requirements slightly to allow me to hire EMTs with the condition that the individual would be responsible for getting his paramedic certification along with medical authorization to work as a paramedic within two years of appointment. So that's 
And that's sort of what this position would be too. They'd be EMT would be fine, but in two years you have to gain your certification as a paramedic. Correct. And there's a little nuance with this one because of the grant expiring in December of 2020, 2020 uh, it, it may not be funded further. That'll be up to the town next year. Uh, and the individuals who are interviewing for that position have been made aware of that. So there's the potential that they could not have a job before they finish paramedic school. Okay. Probably. Yeah, I do. Oh. I understand what you're saying. Yes. It's not general, general practice, but I do understand what you're saying. Sorry, what's not general practice? Usually when we fill a position, we don't immediately turn around and let them go. Usually they tend to stay. Well, I, I, I think that's the plan. That's the hope. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, the hope. okay. Sorry, I missed. No, well, he was saying, I mean, truthfully, the expectation you need to set is to the individual being hired is that there's a potential that if the town doesn't fill your, you know, agree to fund your position, you won't have a job. Right. So he, exactly. he's being honest up front, but the likelihood of that is pretty small based on past practices. Right. So, um, so my concern is with the, the safer people. Mm -hmm. So, um, because I know it took so long to get those and we're, we're finally at a full staff fire department, right? Um, what, so, what happens first to the one that left with the safer grant? What happens with that um, replacement, right? So you had four, now you, and, and one person left. Mm -hmm. Are you allowed to fill that position now? Yes, and that person is funded through the end of the grant, just like everybody else. No, okay, no. It, they don't get an addition, they don't no. get an extension? No. Okay, all right, so there's that. So in this <coughs> case, unless you hire a paramedic, that person's going to have to hurry up and go through certification then before well, again that's why I say the they, they may run out of, of time if the, if the town decides not to fund the position mm. they may still be in paramedic school after the grant expires and they don't have a job could, could you clarify the grant piece because when you say funded are they being paid they're only partially paid from the grant correct so it, I was viewing this as the t we as a town were funding the position, whatever the f full salary is, and getting a reimbursement for a portion of that. Yep. So we were basically paying the full cost and getting a, a revenue for a portion of it coming Correct. Out. Whatever the percentage and, is. And when that reimbursement declines, we're still funding the position unless we decide it like any. It has to go through, it has to be approved by, by town. Right, so here's my issue, right? As we found out a week or so ago with Barbara in her forecast, you, these four people positions are not forecasted um, as being fully funded by the town after, what, what do we have, a year and a half left? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've got concerns on that because, you know, to, kind of to Kevin's point, right, and to Mike's point, we're, f we're getting reimbursed for these people. We're finally at full staff for this fire department. Hopefully things are going well and, you, and you're happy with the, the folks that you have. Um, the good news is that you're gonna get a, hopefully another replacement for that safer grant. So what happens? I mean, in my mind, it would be god awful for the town to just say, <laughs> Sorry, we don't have the money, right? But I got to tell you, that's what it's looking like, right? We don't have a lot of money in another year and a half's time. Um, I, I, I don't know what that process is in a year and a half's time. Yeah, so in my mind, I don't know why we would, if, if we find that when the safer grant runs out, we're a little tight on money and we have to cut back on budgets, why, why these four positions are the ones that we start with. I think we're at a position where we have um, a, a staffing level in, in the town across all departments that are contributing towards that overall budget and and the town administrator board of selectmen and, and separately the finance committee evaluates what the priorities are and and where where things need to be trimmed and it, it may be in other areas not necessarily starting with you know these are the last four positions and so these, I, I these are different than others. It, the, the, I don't think that's how it was presented. I mean, we, we were given this grant, correct me if I'm wrong, for three years. Mm -hmm. and, and the town could have said, 
No, because we know how much money we were going to be spending mm -hmm. over those three years. The town very well could have said no, and then we wouldn't have got the positions. But the town said, yes, we'll do it for the, for the, for the amount of the grant, or the length of the time term for the grant. So it makes sense, perfect sense, that these positions go before the town, whether it's the Board of Selectmen or town administrator, I don't know who, but someone has to go and say, yeah, we're going to keep them and add them to the headcount. Or they say, no, sorry, we had the grant and, and we, the life is over and bye-bye, right? Yeah, and, and you know, a year and a half ago when I, I made the presentations to the town, to the, to the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen, that was part of that conversation. Right. And we all agreed that at some point we were going to have to further that conversation to make the determination of what to do with those positions going forward once the grant ended. Now, I <coughs> excuse me, had conversation with Mike and it the question really comes down to what level of service and staffing do the taxpayers prefer to have from the fire department and and my simple example is do we roll the dice as an individual that we're going to be the second call and the staff is not going to be there and we're going to have to either call somebody in and wait or call mutual aid from another town and wait and that's really the question that has to get answered to make the determination, do we fund these positions? Right now, we're funded for four people full time every day. That means both ambulance are staffed. Does that mean we're not gonna be able to answer the third call? Potentially, it does mean that. There's always gonna be that nth call that we can't answer. But right now, I'm able to staff both <coughs> my ambulances on a full time basis, which means the first two calls get covered on a regular basis. And that gets us to a call between five and seven minutes generally. Mm -hmm. and as opposed to 15, 20 minutes or longer. Right, if they have to wait for a, a surrounding town. And, and, I, and, and I think most people will be happy with that. And I'm okay. glad you came. <laughs> have you been listening? Of course. So, so what happens at the end of the grant? Because So I, th I think you guys are concentrating too much on this grant. So I mean, at this point in time, the town has, you know, the town applied for the grant, we got the grant, we brought on four additional paramedics, okay? Obviously, we're short, we're down one, but that will be replaced. Uh, just like we're swinging, we, I mean, we had, you know, we were doing really well, everything was in the black, we were in black by a lot of money. We had a lot of excess levy capacity. So now things are swinging the other way, but, None of us can predict what is going to happen over the next couple of years. So we already are funding a large portion of the SAFER grant in this year's budget, or next year's budget. Mm. Half is ha half right. is seventy five percent. Half uh, is, is twenty five percent. Half is sixty five percent. Right. So we so we, we've already been able to accommodate that. Other things that you haven't seen yet, but one of the articles on the annual town meeting war is going to be for us to implement the 3% local option tax for recreational marijuana. There are two, uh, two businesses that are looking to come into town. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what that revenue is going to be. But obviously, if the town supports that article for the 3%, that's additional revenue that we don't currently have now that, that we will have. So. Um, you know, I think we should pretty much just be concentrating on the fact that, you know, we're able to, the budget that we have, you have in front of you supports those four paramedics. We're going to continue it out through the, through the end of the SAFER grant, and then we'll, we'll see where we are. And I don't know who was saying it when I was walking up the stairs regarding the fact that, you know, decisions, if, if things have to change, decisions will be made. It doesn't mean it's the, it's the paramedic positions. It's just that we'll have to take a total look at the budget and see where we stand. So. Um, I, I do think we're putting too much weight on that right now. Um, you know, there's also a lot of different development projects that are coming into town. That's going to be additional new growth. So, again, things can swing either way. So, I, I think I think the question that I have on the safer grant, folks, yeah. what happens at the end of that safer grant? Does it have to go before board of selectmen or? I mean, I don't, I don't know what the, pro do they, at the end of the grant, do we just say, mm, you continue, or like, is there some formal process, Barbara, is what I'm getting at? Okay, or do we, we just keep them? Because, it would, you know, if we just keep them, them, we just keep them. Yeah. So next year, when I present my budget, they, they will more than likely be a part of that budget. And you'll see, 
a half a year of of funding for mm -hmm. them and then a half a year of their positions where the town funds 100 percent and so would, is that how the process would go then and then after and then after next year's budget they'll be 100 percent so do we just slide them in is that how the the procedure goes is my point i, I would say that they are they are employees you know they, yeah. they remain in the budget and we the the intention i believe is that we would continue them because that was the decision that was made when the grant was applied for to enhance the the level of the department with those employees so the budget will be submitted it'll go to the town administrator he will determine what can and cannot be afforded and there, like i said we could be looking at a revenue swing the other way i mean there's lots of things going on there's they're looking at the chapter 70 formula at the state level i actually just was speaking to <coughs> representative smola today regarding that um, the house budget is coming out i'm told they're voting and it'll be out noon tomorrow I don't know those numbers. So all the numbers that are built into the budget are based on the governor's numbers, but there's things that are happening at the state level. So um, as we progress, and it, it seems like it's a little bit later, usually we have those numbers by now, beyond just the governor's numbers by the time we're sitting down and right. talking. But we'll see what, what that brings. I, I have no idea. But yes, I think that all the positions, that it, whether it's firefighters, police officers, administrative assistance it doesn't matter they'll all continue in the budget going forward and then you know those decisions will be made like anything else if in fact we have to make some mm -hmm. decisions but it it also it doesn't have to be employees that get cut there's other things that we can you know we that would be everything would be looked at well that's that's certainly what you would you guys would do well the, look at the bulk of we we are a, a, a people oriented business i mean the bulk of our money is in employee costs that's that's what we do we serve the public. So, well, so, Chief, there's two ways to look at the positions. One is you felt the need to add four staff members to get to a, a, a level of staffing you thought was um, aligned with what the, the town needed. Well, and the services yeah. to be provided. Yeah. Uh, and meet the level of services the town town people want. Um, and, and the grant was a way to ease the cost of those four new hires in, in your department for, for the three-year period of that. The other side is to say it was a way to add four members at a slight contribution, you know, a, a, a split between the grant and the town for a three-year window of time that would then fade away and we'd figure out what to do next. So in, uh, which of those two views um, were you approaching the, the staff? The former. Member? The first view. We're adding four new full-time staff. We're going to ease the burden for the first couple of years, and and we knew that we're picking up these salaries going forward beyond that. Yeah, and and I, I think again that was part of the conversation back when the presentations were made. That that's exactly what we were doing, and then at some point as we got closer to the end of the grant, we would all have to sit down and have a conversation about how to move forward. Right, and 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 that's how i understood it as well and and by the way i mean i'm all for this because i know the difficulty that your predecessor had you know getting full staff so this was absolutely a, a great way of you know getting getting those folks in but i always had i guess it was a little kludgy to me what happened at the end when the SAFA grant went away you know of course, we're not going to get rid of them. No, the intent right? was But I didn't know what had enough. to happen. The intent was never that we're hiring these individuals and that when the, when the grant ends, they're out of a job. That, that, was, that was never okay. the intent. I yeah. didn't know yeah. that. Right. I thought it had to go before some mm -hmm. higher being. No, I mean, you know what I'm saying? No, it, I mean, it will continue. And the, so fiscal 21, One. will, you know, the grant will be continuing. We'll get 35% reimbursement for the first six, six months, months yeah. and then it will go to, it'll drop to zero for the second and then I guess the discussion would happen beyond that right because we would obviously we're going to want to serve out the grant and then pro and and beyond that that's the intent well I would think that you would be having the discussion now to keep them in the budgets going forward correct mm -hmm. I don't Not think, necessarily. I think there's no discussion. Yeah, yeah, I think discussion that, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we yeah. hired them yeah. as employees. Yeah. And, right. And the thing now is we just have to figure out how to fund them as the grant winds down. And right. when the town absorbs 100% right. of the cost, they're still employees. Right. I, I think that, yeah, it's 
we're moving forward as those positions will continue to be funded. But that we can't have the conversation because we really don't have enough information yet. This is right. another year and a half away. You right. don't know about the revenue that a we lot, a lot can variables. change. I mean, there's even, I mean, if you look at his town report, which came out yesterday, or, there wasn't an, an increase in ambulance costs, or calls. Significant, Significant yes. Significant, yes. which could also mean some revenue extra coming in too. I mean, right. it might not be significant, but it is. But there's a marked increase in the calls if you, if you look at the town report. Yep. And this conversation happens for all employees. The, the ones that we add five extra hours to their, their staff right now, it's the new hire that comes in, the, the new janitor that uh, we bring on board. Well, we might be a little tight. Everyone, all, all employees have that issue of you're it's subject to appropriation well, and that's town why meeting, and that's why it and, came up. and our our ability yeah. to to you know what how we prioritize it's not necessary if i fall or right you know, last in first out either no right. but I, I i i just felt like we were con you're concentrating too much on these four positions and, and that that's not Agreed. the way it would be looked at it would be looking at the total town so budget. so my and it's really not a concern is is making sure that they are funded beyond because when I asked you if they were not in the forecast, you said they weren't in the forecast. I get it. You don't know. You don't have a crystal ball. But knowing that the grant is going to go away and knowing that we do have these four additional people, although really they've been with us for, an, for a while now, so at some point they're, they're no longer called additional. But we do have to fund for them going forward. We do. So, which means other things have right. to. So when you asked me that last week, I think it was, mm -hmm. I, I did not, going, going out the five years, I did not, I guess maybe the way I spoke, you anticipate, you, you took it as I, we weren't funding them. I just didn't build in 100% of the cost in the outer no, years. No, I understand what you meant. I just took the, the fire budget and increased it over the previous years and right. I didn't factor in the extra well percentage, percentage yeah, and extra percentage the, no I understood that right yeah, but it I wasn't it wasn't intentional of just saying you know well I'm dropping them off as if they, as if they don't exist and then this is where we stand mm -hmm. I, I just didn't do that yep. and I wanted no, no, to be no. honest and about that no, so. and my only point is to to make sure that it is known that you know that that they should be in now that the the even though it's a smaller increase, it, it needs to be in there. Right. Or it needs to be considered, I should say. Right. And, and I, I truly believe that, th you know, everything changes overnight. It, it really does. And so I, my hope is that, you know, what I, you know, I don't know what new growth will be. I, you know, there's so many unknowns when you're building, a, when you're trying to look at what's going to happen five years from now, four years from now. So I basically based everything, if everything stays the same, so I didn't factor in revenue from the 3%. Why? Because I don't know if it's going to pass. If it passes, then, then we'll figure it out. But even then, I wouldn't know what that number is. In fact, there was just a bulletin th from the DOR saying, you know, be really conservative if you're using that number because you don't know what it's going to be. You don't know how quickly these, these facilities are, or these businesses are going to be built. And it goes to your point, Mike, where you asked me, you know, why, aren't, why don't I not count, like, the 40B project? You asked me that one year. Well, it's okay. been years now. It's Exactly. <laughs> why? Because we don't count it until it actually happens, because we don't know when it's going to happen. But there's lots of other things, you know, that are happening in town that are going to increase the revenue through taxes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if a restaurant comes in, then we're, you know, we're getting tax revenue, we're getting meals tax. There, you know, there's so many things that, that go into the formula. And I can get a list Larry, from Gene okay. of all the things that have gone through the permitting process, been approved, 40B, Downey Road, many others, and, and you think they're coming and they have plans, but they get stalled, whatever else. So you're, you're right. There's things that we can see are on horizon, um, but we need to be cautious exactly. when, when we put them in here and then once they're they're here you, you hope they're around for a long time sometimes right. they come on board and then they just don't work out and you know the valuations decline for a period so if you're good i'll let the chief take that oh, larry, larry has a question oh. i don't know if that goes to Barbara. Just, a, just an observation uh, listening to the discussion i think there are three underpinning factors that it wouldn't hurt at all if we uh, if we appreciated one is the opportunity to focus on the value associated with the cost, not just the cost itself. Another is the talent 
to live with uncertainty. And the third is to have faith in our collective ability to figure the damn thing out. And if we do those, keep those three factors in mind, almost everything slots into it. And we make our way. Life gets lived. Yes. I have a point here and a question. The, um, I just wanted to bar, bar, Barbara's point back up too. I mean, we've always historically been very conservative on the revenue side, not counting dollars that may occur, but something that was very def definitive and could be counted on coming if it was in one or two years as well. And that's really helped us keep a very good fiscal position and knowing where we're going. And my second question is just for the people who aren't familiar with the fire department to you is if we assume you hire this additional firefighter that you're seeking at this point, what is the composition of the department at this point? It, as far as? Well, you have one chief, six captains. So we have one chief, three lieutenants, and 10 firefighters now. And of those 10 firefighters, there's six paramedics, or is it six paramedics? And is of the 10 firefighters, there are nine paramedics. Oh. Uh, two of those are currently in school. So seven, seven full-fledged working paramedics, two of them in school, scheduled to graduate sometime in July. So 14 people overall. Full-time employees, correct. Thank you. Okay. I have a question, Chief. Um, was the department funding the paramedic school for the individual that moved on? No. Oh, so it's completely on their own? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? On the fire department budget, that is. Oh, because we it, just the public safety. Yeah. So, so if not, I'll make a motion that the Finance Committee recommend town meeting approve the fire department budgets uh, lines uh, 71 through 74 in the amount of $1,574,009. Second. I don't know today's date. Denied. Yeah. Okay. Hold on here. Let me get to that. Seventy-one to seventy-four. Okay. Any further discussion? I, I just want to point something out for the chair and for our record keeping purposes that the line numbers we're referring to in here are going to change so that it's just the line numbers as reflected in the budget package. Why are, will they be changing? Because the, the very in? first line item of the whole budget up here is a salaries thing that will be considered for the Board of Selectmen that is new. That oh. should have been line item one. I just referred to it as line item zero. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I just, just, just to make sure that when we reference line items in a minute, we're referencing to them in the budget package booklet and not as they may be printed in the Finance Committee right. report. So the minutes, the minutes are reflecting the amounts, though, so. Just look at the minutes, yeah. Okay, so 71 through 74 for $1,574,009. All in favor? Opposed? I guess that's it. Seven, not nine. Seven to zero. Seven zero. Okay. And the public safety complex as well. Page 24. Page 20. 20. Um, again, it's a, a relatively level funded budget. I know you, we talked about some um, repairs to the floor and so forth. That's that's not capital. in this budget. That's, that's in the in capital. capital. Yeah, okay. we, we, yeah we'll, we will get to that. Too. Sure. Yeah. So this is just the the, the the ongoing annual costs associated with um, uh, maintenance and, and operation of the of the building itself. Yes, are there any highlights, additions? You already have your hand up. Yeah. I, have, well, I have a question. Charter services here, is that the cable internet bill for the building? Uh, After general generator maintenance contract, charter services, oil, just to kind of give you an idea where I am. Out the middle. That is okay. actually um, the, yes, that's the, the, actually that's the line for our radio system. For the 
ra- well, you have a radio system down below, radio repairs, radio system, phone line. It's it's the communication. Uh, right. I mean. So the, the dispatch system is now a computer-based dispatch system. Yeah. So that feeds that dispatch system. Would you say it's, it, when you ask me if it's internet? Yeah, it's, it's not. To my knowledge, it's not the internet for us to browse the web. It's the internet for the dispatch consoles. Does so it's going through charter communications, though. Correct. So, so I don't know if I, this used to be a question I used to ask every year, and I still don't understand why they're different. But almost every town building has a different number for the same service. I noticed that. So, so do you have any idea why this one's two thousand, but it's sixteen hundred somewhere else, and only eight hundred somewhere else? I have no idea. I, I don't know what the other budgets call for. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that too. <laughs> they are all different, yes. But it's all the same service. It's There's all different real... levels of service, though, different speeds. Right, but the town would all have the same one, and the differences aren't made up in the costs that in the different <coughs> budgets. It, it, it might be done when they signed up and what the contract was at the time, because the rates are always changing. Yeah, but nowadays you just call, and usually they'll adjust them for you. Yeah. I mean, that might be something we can consider to consolidate. So you're, so you're asking, is is the safety complex, do they have their own? Well, they all do. They all used to. They all had their own charter contracts. Right. But they all paid a wildly different number. I understand, yeah. They still do. Yes, <laughs> and they still do. Um, I have a question. Go ahead. The... Communication center cleaning. Is that going to be an annually scheduled thing? I would think that you would want that cleaned. That was brought to my attention by the the um, <coughs> the dispatchers. Apparently, it has never been done. Right. Um, just like chair cleaning. Don't we just found out chair cleaning in all of the buildings have never been done either. So yeah. <laughs> um, just... The. The information that was provided to me was it was a one-time thing. I don't know that it has to be done every year. Okay. Uh, a lot of what has to be done is cleaning up of old wiring that's underneath the console that's no longer being used, and now it's just it's in oh, the so way. it's not dusting and there is going to be some of that as well because under behind all that wiring it, that's never been cleaned, they are going to clean all that as well. Okay. Um, but to my knowledge, this was a one-time request from the from the dispatching side. So if so, all right. So they're going to reorganize it or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And would they also clean yes. the equipment and dust it and yeah, the all company that, other that stuff? the company that provided the, the the quote that's what they do. They'll come in and they clean all the electronics that are related to the dispatch area especially underneath, again, where all the wiring is and the dust is built up and yep. just the everyday cleaning of the building doesn't address it. So this will get a little bit deeper okay. and it'll make a little bit more space too. So you don't know if it's gonna be a, a, a thing that you might wanna do every couple of years I think at some point it's gonna have to get done again, but I don't yeah. think every year. Okay. Okay. I, I had a question on the oil which mm -hmm. went up a fair amount, and yet I think the town has been, for the town buildings, are level funding. So what's the difference? Do you have a different contract, or? So we were part of the school mm. building, uh, the school process, mm -hmm. um, and for some reason uh, that I'm not sure, Barbara probably could have answered that question. Um, we're going to be part of the rest of the town process now, and the, the cost number changed. Oh, it did okay. because of that. Is that the same as true for the garbage costs too? Because that, although not a dollar, a significant dollar amount is a significant percentage increase. Yeah, the garbage cost is. Uh, I, I don't have an, an explanation on on the garbage cost. It seems like there are several different vendors in the town. Uh, I know that the the facilities coordinator was trying to centralize that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where that project ended up. But it seems like um, all of the all several of the buildings have different vendors, and, and the, the price is just all over the place. My vendor is Republic, and they do it based on weight and, and a tip fee. So when the dumpster's full, we call them. They come charge us a flat fee, and then whatever the weight of the dumpster is, um, and, and that's where the costs go. It's a projected number based on what we're spending this year. Okay. Any other questions on the uh, public safety complex? 
I'll make a motion that the Finance Committee recommend town meeting approve the safety complex budget line 62 and 63 in the amount of $93,460. Second. Any further questions? All in favor? 7 0. Your choice, Chief Capital or Betterment? Uh, we got have capital open. Okay. Our capital. So this year I have uh, three requests for um, capital purchases on the fire side. Um, the first of those are. Um, SCBA, which is self-contained breathing apparatus, voice amplifier devices. Currently, when we go into a building, we put our air masks on. We have no uh, ability to amplify the communications when we try to speak to one another or try to speak through a radio to the outside or, or to anybody for that matter. Um, this uh, appropriation will allow me to buy 26 devices that clip onto the SCBA mask and amplify the voice as it comes out of the individual's uh, mouth so that it can be heard within the building and over the radio much clearer. They will be issued to the individual just like any other piece of equipment. So the accountability will be on that individual to maintain that piece of equipment uh, and keep it in proper working order. This is something that um, I, I was um, quite surprised to find out that that the Sturbridge Fire Department didn't have up until this point. Actually, yeah, just a couple questions that makes me think of this. A, um, how about hearing then? If you're amplifying what they're, someone's saying, how about the ability of the people to hear what that person's saying? Is, there, is that already built into the helmet or is it already built into no, the No, it would be ambient. Uh, the, the ambient sound that comes out of the, the it's basically it's a, it's a loudspeaker built right into the mask. Oh, I see. So okay. when they speak, the, the voice is amplified out gotcha. uh, into the air. All right. So you would be able to hear it with your, your natural ear. All right. You, it would also theoretically improve your ability to give instructions and guidance to people who may be trying to rescue. Yes, or, or the, the, the counter to that is somebody who's a firefighter who needs assistance will be able to call out for help in a much clearer way. I just, just one other question is kind of related to this. Is the actual self-contained breathing apparatuses themselves, they, you, they're a very expensive proposition. And mm -hmm. there's, well, there was discussion when I left a few years ago, I don't know what it, it had, about a replacement plan for that is there one in I, I actually have it in the the five-year plan for fiscal year 24 so is that all of them at once or do you yes. just do oh so it, we're going to have them all once and there are 10 or 13 in your life cycle or something like that I believe so yes yeah, yeah and there's, a, there's a there's a hydrostatic life on the tanks mm -hmm. and then there's a manufacturer's life on the frame and pack itself Sometimes those are different. Yeah. The tanks we can have retested, the packs a little bit more difficult. Do the new ones have this voice amplification device as part of them, or will this I transfer to them? I think some of the manufacturers them? are integrating them. Uh, I don't know that they're perfected enough yet. Um, there's another manufacturer who has a voice, a built-in voice, an amplifier, um, but it, it's still kind of in its infancy. And will these devices transfer to the new masks? Yes. Um, why do you need 26? Uh, because I have part-time employees as well as full-time employees. So this would, this would be to issue one per firefighter. So when we went through your staffing, you, 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 you said 10 full-time, you paused. You could have followed up with, you, you also have call firefighters Correct. So your part-timers, uh, about a dozen of those more or less, right? Correct, yeah. There's, so there's 14 career firefighters, there's 12 paid on-call firefighters. Okay, thanks, I didn't, I, I missed that. <laughs> Any other questions on that one? Um, the second thing I'm, I'm requesting are, um, again, for the safety of the firefighters, intrinsically safe flashlights. Currently, um, when we go into a building, we have a couple of flashlights that 
the individuals are able to grab kind of as a first come first serve uh, circumstance. This would be to issue a uh, flashlight to each firefighter um, so that when they go into a smoke filled building or a dark building, um, these are made to withstand the temperatures that they're going to encounter as well as um, they're made to have a more significantly brighter light than the standard Home Depot <coughs> true value type flashlight. And one assumes they're waterproof too. They are waterproof as well, yes. Any questions on those? So what do you use now? As I said, we have a few that are, are in the fire trucks that kind of oh. are a first come, first serve oh. um, situation. This would uh, provide each firefighter one. And they're made to hook right on the, the outer coat of the firefighter. There's actually a loop on the coat that you hook the, the flashlight onto. So it stays with their, their turnout gear. And then they don't, have to, they don't have to hold it. They just turn it on and it shines whichever direction they're faced with. Do the police have anything similar? I mean, because they may go in dark buildings. Uh, and, I, I mean, know. probably not as sophisticated, but. I, I don't know. Or do they just have I mean, the, I've seen on TV that they have flashlights <laughs> on their guns. Do they just have Home <laughs> Depot flashlights? I think that's TV. <laughs> There's, there's also the additional request for the thermal imaging cameras. Yeah, so that one has a, uh, an asterisk by it. And that's because I have put in for um, an AFG grant, an assistance for firefighters grant through FEMA uh, for these same items. So if this is approved, uh, I would hold off purchasing them until I knew that we weren't getting the grant. Um, we're in that award process with FEMA, but because of the, the government shutdown, I think they're a little bit behind on on making notifications of their awards. So if, if the grant came through, this request would go away. And I, and I guess this is a, a camera that's, you know, useful for even for the police if they're in a barricade situation where they can see bodies through the walls type of thing and see where the heat sources are. So through the walls may be a little bit difficult, but uh, certainly the, these cameras can show you the heat signature of, of you know, a body, an individual. We use them a lot to look when we have reports of fire in the wall. We'll look to see if there's temperature changes that we can't see with the naked eye. Chimney fires are a good example of that. You know, the fire's supposed to stay in the chimney, but sometimes it gets outside, so it's, instead of tearing the wall apart and destroying a person's house, we'll use the camera to try and see if there's a heat signature up there. If there is, then we investigate it further. Okay. Thank you. Then I think you also have some for the public safety complex for capital. Yep. Uh, the first request was for uh, replacement of the entrance and the door trim. Uh, a few years ago, when I started, uh, there was a, apparently a, an appropriation to do some work on the front of the building, and uh, I'm not quite certain what happened to that funding or what happened to that project that was a transition to the facilities coordinators and that work never got done. So this would be to uh, replace the front entrance door and to replace the rotting trim around the um, pillars in the front of the building and the trim along the uh, sally port, the front garage doors that faced uh, 131. So was this work n never done then? Correct. So that money went back Correct. to the town? Okay, because I do remember, I remember it too. very distinctly mm -hmm. that, that that needed to get done. And I, and I looked at the door with your with, you know, previous chief, mm -hmm. and I could see what needed to be done. Um, to be quite honest, I never paid too much attention the, la the last few times I've been in the, in the safety complex. But... Um, the door itself needed to be repaired. Did that at least get repaired? There was some repair work done to the door. Because I know they're repainted or something. It I don't didn't know. last. There was also supposed to be a new um, window put in that didn't happen. Um. Well, I'm just I'm going to try and find it. I'm just curious to know what the 
you know, the cost was, because it, it seems to be right around the same cost, although I don't recall it being in the budget. So it was in his operating budget, actually. It was for $4,000. So I remember that discussion. I was new on the board, and, and you were very passionate about getting that door re repaired. I was. it going on for a while. It needed to be fixed. And I think it came back to, they, they did a minor repair versus a replacement that um, I think the facility person at the time said was, it, it solved the problem and fixed it. And, mm -hmm. and it, it appears it has done that <laughs> inexpensively on a short-term basis. And we, yes. We now need to carry forward. I, I, I would just recommend you actually get it done before you come back next year because Jonah's <laughs> going to be all over you. And we don't want to have that conversation. In a nice way. Understood. In a nice way. Understood. Right. Okay. You need it. You need it, right? But yeah. uh, The next item I have is replacement of the uh, apparatus bay overhead doors and openers. Uh, these doors and openers are original to the building. Um, the, the openers are um, in, significant in, in significant disrepair. Um, we're finding that uh, the parts to get to repair them are, are becoming more and more difficult. The doors themselves um, are, uh, show a lot of signs of wear. They're no longer uh, weather. Uh, tight as they should be so we're losing uh, a lot of efficiency through the doors themselves in addition to the fact that their their um, insulation value is not what we can get for today so these this appropriation would uh, provide for 10 new doors 10 new openers and all of the safety mechanisms that uh, would go along with those with those doors uh, chief are we in the unenviable we the town in the unenviable position of uh, having a building that n literally never closes that was built I guess around 1985 or so yeah, I think it was more of 87 ish maybe. okay that um, it's I guess highly unlikely of building a new building so we'll get a new building piece by piece, 76,000, 21,000, and one day we'll have a new building. That's we wouldn't do that with an automobile, of course. You know, and first the brakes go, and then, and then, and then. But that's why I'm wondering if we are, we the town, are in the unenviable position of having to get a new building little by little by little. I think that's an accurate statement. Thank you. You're advocating a feasibility study, Larry? Huh. Oh, no, well, no, no. We actually have I one of those. I thought we did one. <laughs> I thought we did one over there. Well, did it cost $166,900, the feasibility study? Mm. It wasn't, probably wasn't that much. <laughs> That's how much I just be quick. he needs just, to just have. Just a replacement of the doors for the, where the fire apparatus is, not the two the police use up front. That's correct. So uh, let me go back to that because I, I would have slightly gone in a slightly different position. Although you, you're making it sound like the build, building's crumbling and and we got major repairs and doing a lot of replacements, I would have viewed this as building's 30 years old. At, at that point, some um, you know high cost dollar items tend to wear out, need need a replacement that will then last us. I don't think we'll be back here another 20 years, 30 years for another overhead door on, on normal maintenance even though they go up and down a lot more often than a homeowner store right sure so I, I think you can look at it that way too it, it's it's the in my opinion the cost of keeping the building uh, in operating condition we, we the fe feasibility study may say we need more space we need a different layout there there may be other things that say the building doesn't quite work for us today uh, it, it was great for 30 years but there are other needs pre from driving different space needs and requirements Building needs a little, little maintenance after about 30 years. Uh, yeah, we got to 100,000 miles on, on the car, a couple oil changes. Now we got to replace a few things. We get through this cycle. We're good for another 50 or 75,000 miles here, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think also, uh, if I can note it, there's in the capital, the five year plan, there's also um, in fiscal year 23. Uh, the intent to replace the boilers in the building. So again, it's just the operational costs in order to keep the building uh, open and working. Question just about the comment that was just asked about the police 
police doors. Why would we not do all the doors at once? We would be facing the... I don't think the police would... The, the, they were done not too long ago when they had to replace the whole floor and that. That's why I was just going to make sure, too, that the repair resurface apparatus for here is the fire department. Correct. Because about three or four years ago, it was a major repair <coughs> to the police department ones because that one's actually up in the air. Yeah. That, that, there's an empty room below where those, that, those garages, so... Okay. Correct. So those doors, when we did the walk around, um, those doors did not look to be in as bad of repairs as the uh, I think you have one more there. Yep. The last request um, is for the um, repair and resurfacing of the apparatus floor. Uh, again, the floor is, is original to the building. Um, through settling, there are a number of cracks which are now becoming hazards for two reasons. One is the water that we uh, use to wash the vehicles or clean the floor, et cetera, is, is finding its way into those cracks, which is making it uh, more uh, uh, hazardous. And two, they're becoming trip hazards. Um, so this was actually the second phase of uh, a two-phase project we began last year. We um, corrected the electrical concerns on the apparatus floor last year. This would then um, finish that project. The process would be to uh, sandblast the entire floor, epoxy fill all of the cracks. Um, all of the vendors, there were three of them that I spoke with, felt that whatever settling was going to happen has happened, uh, and there shouldn't be any risk of further settling. settling. Nothing's a guarantee, but that was the, all three of their opinions separately. Um, they would fill those cracks with an epoxy and then skim over uh, the entire floor so you wouldn't see the cracks and then put an epoxy finish on top, which would be a, um, I think it's a 50-year floor. Uh, Kevin? I, I do have a question here. And I, I'm not sure I'm going to explain myself well. Did they take in consideration too, after they refinished this floor and, and left it all out, the realignment with your tar driving surface? Because if it ends up two or three inches above your actual tar driving things, the, just the trucks going off of that is gonna end up cracking that whole edge. Yeah, uh, so they bevel the edge. Okay. Uh, they actually put a bevel on the edge so that they, to avoid that a potential. Anywhere where there's going to be a transition between the new floor and the old floor or the new floor and the outside mm -hmm. will have a beveled edge. Okay. It'll, it reduces a trip hazard and it prevents exactly what you're suggesting. Okay. Good you're not getting three inch thick epoxy on this one. No, I, thought it was, I, you know, I, I think it's less than a half an inch. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. But, but still, I mean, even a half an inch over a, a, a significant, right, these trucks time. aren't light, especially when they flow with water. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of pressure right there in that edge. Chief, is it? It's actually one quarter of an inch. I'm sorry. It's one quarter of an inch. Uh, is it fair to assume that uh, total bit weight of the vehicles and equipment has gone up over 30 years? And can we be assured that the foundation is adequate for even the plans for the current equipment or any other vehicles that we may yes. have? Yes. Yes, as I mentioned, the, the, the three vendors that I met with all felt that whatever settling was going to happen has happened and the, the floor is stable now. Okay, do you want to turn to the betterment request? Sure. Um, I don't know which order you have them in, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, well, they're pretty much all on one page, so I think okay. uh, we, I don't think we'll get too lost. <coughs> uh, the first request I have is for thirteen thousand five hundred for protective firefighting gear. Last year, there was uh, an understanding that instead of replacing turnout gear uh, on a prorated basis, uh, we would put an appropriation aside each year in betterment, so that at the end of the ten-year life of the turnout gear, which was purchased in two thousand thirteen there would be sufficient funding available to purchase new turnout gear for all of the uh, uh, personnel. I just said, uh, yeah, and again, going back to the scuba, because I know that's a big, big bill too. Similar strategy there as well to put aside a little bit of money year after year. So when we hit that big bill at year 10, we've got some funds. Correct. Correct. So 
a set of turnout gear is roughly between thirty five hundred and four thousand dollars right now. Right. Uh, so you're looking, you know, with twenty five people, rough numbers, a hundred thousand um, dollars to replace twenty five sets. Right. Um, the grant that we received in 2013 bought a set for each individual, which means that the warranty, the life of that turnout gear will all end at the same time. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to phasing it in over a period of time, because the question then becomes, if the gear is still good, what do we do with that still good gear? Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> um, this was, this was you know, the, the better solution, put the money aside and then and, and I'm just asking for other foreseeable, you know, replacement costs like that. You're doing the same type of strategy. You're putting money upon for the breathing equipment and money aside for whatever other. Like I noticed, you had turnout gears for wildlife for wildland firefighting too. Yep. That instead of being hit with the full hundred thousand dollar cost of that, if we even put in, you know, six thousand dollars a year, and now we're only hit with a forty thousand dollar bill instead of you know, it's a big difference. Sure. That's certainly something I can I can have a conversation with uh, the finance director about. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. You're almost getting into it. We have we have a stabilization fund for a fire truck. We have a stabilization fund for an ambulance. Right. Much smaller uh, stabilization fund for 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 gear. Well, if you we've want to kind of that. changed things slightly though here, from what I'm saying, because it used to be we replaced a little bit every year. Right. And now, instead of doing that, we're going for all or none on a periodic basis. And, and, and so that's a, that's a bigger nut. It's not like you're only spending $6,000 every year. Now we're going to drop it all in one year. And so maybe those approaches would work better. And you got there because the grant gave you all new, all new gear in one year one time, as yeah. opposed to spreading it over so that you could... And again, if we started phasing this in, let, let's do uh, four pieces a year every year. Now you've got a, a, a four-year-old piece of gear that's still good that you're, you're replacing. And Correct. Did we really get our value out of that? Correct. So how many years now have we been doing this request for the this, fire This is the second year. The second year, okay. Um, I also have a request for $6,100 for special events funding. Uh, that money goes toward um, overtime costs for um, things like the Pan Mass Challenge, the Harvest Festival, the Christmas tree lighting, National Night Out, uh, the um, river race in fire prevention activities that we do on an annual basis. So I guess I'd just like to point out that this kind of confirms what we heard at a prior meeting, that really this is a subsidy for the department's operations and not really a special events account. Because when the special events actually do show up in town and say we'd like to do something this fiscal year, the, there isn't money there because it's already been allocated for something that's foreseeable. I mean, the Pan Mass Challenge happens every year. You know, there's, I don't think there was an event he, he mentioned that doesn't happen every year. And so I, I guess I just have a calling this special events overtime gives you a misnomer because people think, okay, this is for that, you know, like the road race that happened last year in town. It was a one off, you know, it wasn't planned out a year in advance. It came in and they were hit with significant bills and we had these quote unquote special events overtime but all the funds were already earmarked for regular annual expenses. Was that the road race that was put on pretty much by the town you're talking about, or a different road race? The road race that happened on, on that was based at the thing. How did the town put most of it on? This is the one, my understanding was like they were here with the $6,000 police bill that they had to pay for, and when they were looking to get, you know, said that they could get state police or other police office from the town to volunteer their time to do that same exact service it was turned down so which road race was it though um i think it was in october the rick hoyt oh that was in september yeah i thought that was sponsored by the town by the special events committee um okay Even um they didn't the special events committee did not absorb all the costs yeah, they didn't so Oh, I, no, I don't think that they did, but I think it was put on in conjunction with the special. Account. But I guess I just wanted to highlight that this is really what she says. These are, these are funds to provide public safety over time for town-sponsored events. 
not for people coming external. So that's, that's crystal clear because I definitely had a misconception about how these funds were already being used. Well, those aren't all town events. Well, they're they not town events, events, but they happen year after year with right. the town and they're foreseeable right. and they've been funded by STA at some points or parts of them mm -hmm. all along. So is your question more if this is funded for planned events, is there another set of funding for unplanned events? There probably is not. And that's why costs are passed on to the people who are organizing. And I, and I was of the same impression. You know, the whole the whole betterment funding, you know, and the way it's written out. Although I guess the word specific is in there, so that might that might be a, a red flag. But I was of the impression that this was just a pot of money, so that if somebody wanted to have an event on the town common that brought in tons of people, that we'd say, okay, we need a police. Um, and you fire know, and available, and whatever. then you know it would come out of this. But that's not the case because people are getting hit with big time bills. So third parties it. who want to come in and hold an event that require police or fire support are 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 asked to to fund those. These are for we're having town events or events that the town is sponsoring or participating in some way. Um, that you know, we we how does the town charge itself? Well, it's using this, this funds this stream of money to fund the overtime versus the operating budget to fund it. If, if you didn't like it here, we'd stick it in the operating budget, and then all the other, it'd be pretty clear. All the other third party, we don't have overtime, um, you know, separately funded, uh, and and so the third parties have have to pay that. So it, it's a matter I, of I, how, I how do you want to fund the, the the betterment related things that are kind of part of that that town wide. You know, uh, activities and townwide town sponsor t events, you know, such as that. This is, this, you know, it's just, I guess it's a philosophical question. This is a foreseeable annual event. It never goes away. It's part of their, they're almost, they're obligated to be there every year. So it is part of their normal operations, or should be, maybe considered that. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a thing to think about. Yeah, that is an interesting thing to think about because according to the town report the economic development office did help support that time the the hoyt marathon half marathon so i'd have to read that it, okay i have the book i haven't deciphered through it yet yeah i, I noticed that when i was reading it the other uh, last night and i just looked again yeah so yeah it's an interesting question okay okay so now you have uh, a couple the next others thing i have is um 2,500 for structural firefighting cancer prevention hood. So we issue each firefighter a um, protective hood. The new uh, cautions from the NFPA, um, from OSHA, um, from a number, number of other um, research groups is that um, cancer in the fire service is on the rise significantly and one of the most direct routes is through the hood because it's a permeable, it's basically, it's a, it's a piece of cloth that we put around our head, cover our ears and cover our neck. Well, the carcinogens are permeating that to getting into the neck area and we're seeing throat cancer become prevalent in, in firefighters. These hoods would uh, are, have an impermeable membrane that lines them uh, but still allows them to give the thermal protection that we get from the current hoods um, and this would again uh, allow me to issue one hood to each um, firefighter, both career and part-time call firefighter. And are these washable too? Like they are washable. Yeah. In your new washer and dryer? Well, we would not wash them in those. We wash our, they wash their actual uniforms in those. We have oh, a turnout right. gear washer that we would wash right. these in. Okay. Yes. Seems like a no-brainer. Yeah. And the final request I have for Betterment is for 14500 for wildland firefighting gear. Uh, at, at some point in history, there was uh, firefighting, wildland firefighting gear issued. And just like regular structural turnout gear, it has a specific life. At some point, that life was, that expiration life was missed. There's still a handful of, of suits left that people are wearing. 
um, but they're almost to their expiration. This would allow me to outfit, uh, again, each firefighter with a set of wildland firefighting gear. So, so for the non-firefighter, what's the difference between your regular turnout gear and a wildland turnout? Mostly the thermal barrier that's in the structural gear because the temperatures are so high. These are more set up for, it's similar to the exterior part of the structural firefighting gear. Uh, em, em, ember protection so that the, you know your clothes aren't burning while you're walking through trying to fight the brush fire. Fighting a brush fire is a lot different than fighting a, a structural fire. You're actually walking through a lot of the burning material as you're trying to move it around, trying to put it out, put water on it, rake it into a pile, etc. So uh, it's a lot lighter. Generally our brush fires are you know this time of year but we get them during the summer in the hot heat. Mm -hmm. Um, so it provides us the protection without the thermal, the overload thermal uh, protection. Hmm. And I think that's it for you for the betterment, right? That is. Okay. Anybody have any other questions for just, us? Just one more question. Does it also include boots or are the, are the same boots for both operations? So they would use the same boots for both operations. Maybe we should have a an example. Show and tell. <laughs> 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 yeah. Absolutely. Fashion show. Fashion show. Yes. <laughs> half in the uh, regular and half in the <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Chief, for coming out. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. They don't wash these, do they? Heather is up next. Heather Weston from the uh, Senior Center. Last week. It's like Hello. coffee. Hello. It's sticky. No, imagine you'll be quite as long. Come on. Who has the Senior Center? <laughs> no. Ah, that's right. Of course you do, Larry. You updated me <laughs> weekly, practically. Sorry about that. I'm sure. Please turn uh, in the main tab, detailed budget, to page 34 for the Council on Aging. There are two budgets, first the Council, then the Senior Center as a structure. You will see under Purchase of Services, um, a $5 increase, the United States Postal Service has imposed a $5 a year increase for the P.O. box. <laughs> and it's important that we track it all because it's the public's money. It should not go unremarked upon, I think. It's the public to the public, I guess, really. Mm -hmm. From one public to another public, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The federal government is public, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, yes, dear. <laughs> I get it at home. I get it. At well, in some people's minds, the federal government is public. Yes. yes. Of course. <laughs> uh, the there, there's a small side story to the newspaper. Uh, for some reason, the Telegram and Gazette does not uh, sell subscriptions to the town of Sturbridge or, I guess, any other town or to the senior center. They, they insist on a, the name of a human being. Well, there was a change in leadership at the senior center, which Heather, and thank you for setting aside time to visit with us, Heather dutifully went to the newspaper and asked that the name be changed from her predecessors to her own. And so they canceled the subscription. As a result, uh, a faithful uh, senior center patron each day would come in with his own TNG that he subscribes to at home. But still, there is a call for a paper. And so simultaneously to setting up the subscription all over again, they've in <laughs> the paper's increased. The, it's inverse. Uh, it costs more to receive less now. Uh, in that the subscription has gone up and the news hole, as the term is, is smaller because there are more ads. But that, in any event, accounts for the 
shift from uh, the growth from 200 to $255 a year. The Memory Cafe is, uh, is a fascinating uh, service uh, that uh, other towns are imitating uh, because of Sturbridge's success. And in some cases, the Memory Cafe can be dramatic. Someone who will sit all curled up, pointed inward in every sense of the word, will hear music from her youth and literally physically open and blossom and move around in tempo until the song is over and then goes back. Well, not all of the Memory Cafe uh, participants uh, find themselves in that uh, medical condition. Some of them have just simply over the decades, as happens to everybody on earth, of lost uh, brain cells, including the ability to recall short term, later long term. Some uh, may not know it yet, but they are in an early stage of dementia. Some uh, participants uh, derive happiness from the socialization that goes on, and the, uh, the dynamics are invaluable. Uh, uh, in my budgetary judgment, uh, Heather, would you please amplify on the Memory Cafe? I would love to. So our Memory Cafe started um, about a year ago. Um, we opened our first one on June 6th, and it started out as a structure where we were focusing on dementia Alzheimer's to get people to come in and found out we really weren't reaching as many people as we thought we, should, we would. Um, so we decided to open it further and make it accessible to more people. Um, I like to joke around and say that if you're over 40 and you ever walked into a room and you forgot where you put your keys, you might qualify. Um, but we've actually opened the door to people living with Parkinson's, autism, PTSD, um, uh, the, and of course dementia and um, Alzheimer's, as well as people living with other cognitive related illnesses, injuries, brain injuries, brain illnesses. And by doing so, we have significantly increased the number of participants to our cafe. Um, I brought a flyer that I'd like to hand out to all of you, um, showing you what we've been, what we are planning on doing Thank the you. rest of the year Thank for you. our cafe. And the great thing is, is that we have um, some private donors as well as businesses, such as the Church Rotary Club, the Lions Club, even our own police Thank department, you. who have. Um, who have been nice enough to sponsor one of our cafes. One of the wonderful things that we are seeing with our cafe, um, for example, is we have a gentleman who attends our senior center, and part of our senior center, he loves to dance. We don't do dancing in, within the senior center itself. You can't just go up to somebody and start dancing with somebody. It's not really appropriate. At the cafe, he's able to dance and he comes with his wife and they dance and then he dances with a lot of the other participants that come and he is just so happy he's getting to dance there's no judgment no telling me he can't do that and he has so much fun um another one that really gets me is we have a couple she was diagnosed with alzheimer's um, she's gotten to the point where she's can be difficult some days and a lot of the times they come and she doesn't want to be there She wants to leave as soon as the music starts playing and someone starts singing <coughs> She wants to dance with her husband and to see her look in his eyes and 
the love and the devotion and it's like the, he's got his wife back again even if it's just for those few minutes of that song and but it's enough to really just you know make your eyes well up and you're like oh my gosh that's what we do our cafe for and we're just starting to see those little things happening more and more and more and we're reaching more and more people and it's just and that's what we're all about that's what it's about so and that's i guess that's the best way for me to describe what our cafe is doing thank you heather You're uh, you'll find uh in that same section uh, supplies uh office supplies which in the well, the current, this year, which is from a budget standpoint last year, a $1,500 item, uh, the director uh, requested 2000 The acting town administrator uh, proposes 1700 The increase, whatever that amount may turn out to be, covers the presence now of, or soon, of the veterans agent, as well as what is called the SHINE uh, agent shine I think is an acronym yes do you recall offhand if you hadn't asked me yes yeah, I it's, it, it, it's, it's for insurance it's a, it's um it's a volunteer that comes in and goes over insurance and helps um, people with their insurance acquiring new insurance certain, changing insurance and certain financial yes difficulties yes can even turn into conversations about how to beware of scams uh, often uh, elders, particularly living alone, need to talk to somebody. Well, that's what happens when the phone rings mm. and there's this voice. Well, you have to try to help people safeguard themselves against that. But there are budgetary costs proposed as a growth of 500 uh, initially, and, and you can see it's before you. Uh, the other figures are... So, Larry, I'm sorry. I want you to clarify that a little bit. I'm a little confused. You, you're talking these are people that provide services, the Shine services and events agent. W wouldn't that be in salaries and not in office supplies? And is, is that why the salaries are going up at $5,000? No. The, um, the, the person that does the Shine and the person that does our veterans agent... Um, it's voluntarily, voluntarily that they're coming in to do it. Mm -hmm. So they do this on a volunteer basis, so there's no pay to them. But they are coming in and they are using our ink, our paper, our supplies. They're, you know, and they're getting more and more and more activities that they're doing to help people, and they're getting busier and busier, so they're seeing more and more people, which is, again, using up our supplies, our paper, our ink. All right, so, there are yeah. even even now still they're in their 90s, yeah. but World War II veterans, uh, somewhat younger Korean. No, uh, no, I'm now I get now, yeah. now I understand what's happening. So, in oh. the more hours our veteran agent or shine person puts in, the more paper, paper and ink and stuff that they're using. But you can't ask them to pay for it; they're volunteering to do this for us and for our you know for our senior population. The rest of the figures are either level or modestly increased from without the town, not within. Uh, a membership uh, organization just increases its dues, for example. Uh, and that's why you see a $75 increase under other charges. Uh, altogether, uh, it is uh, the, the budget for the Council on Aging as, uh, is before you. Um, just when we spoke uh, yesterday, I neglected, uh, and I mentioned that because you may not know sitting there the answer offhand. Okay. Uh, but I neglected to ask um, if you know the number of unduplicated participants, uh, that is counting every person only, mm -hmm. and then altogether the number of visits that those people make. So one person may come mm -hmm. once a year. One person may come 200 times a year. Mm -hmm. Do you know those numbers? I do not know the numbers off the top of my okay. head. Well, I wouldn't even want to guess. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, it, 
uh, don't feel please dinged. I failed to ask you yesterday about that, and you would have presumably been able. I would be more than happy yeah. to look into that and get back to you, though, if you'd like me to. If, if you would, please. I, I don't think the committee sure. sees it as a contingency mm -hmm. to a motion on the budget, but knowing is better than not knowing. Yep. Yeah, that would be interesting, very much mm -hmm. the, the total number versus the total distinct number of people. Sure. Yeah. Now, the salary increase is noted in the front of the book that the hours of the outreach coordinator were increased by 60 hours per week. Per week? To, or per year, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and that's really for the fuel assistance time Correct. to help in that time period. Yeah. Correct. During not the even time for the whole frame, year. It's yeah, just during the time frame for the fuel assistance, the outreach coordinator is out straight with that. So that's uh, Those 60 yeah. hours would be for during that time frame. And what yes. is medical transportation for, used for? Is that to help people get to? Doctor's appointments. Just doctor's appointments? Oh. It can be anything from doctor, from you know, a, a, reg, a annual checkup to um, treatment at can the cancer center. So who, who provides the transportation? Um, we have, we use the elder bus. Uh-huh. And we also have medical drivers that oh, um, oh, so work for the senior people center. People who can't drive anymore. Yep. Uh-oh. volunteers who get Recompensates for the mileage and stuff. Yes. Like that. Now they have. It, it, they get a stipend. Okay. It is like fifteen dollars. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like a fifteen dollar stipend plus plus the you know the gas mileage. Yeah. And many of them turn it back. Because mm -hmm. um. yeah, I, you know, I, I hear people who need rides. It seems like one of my friends always gets to bring these people. <laughs> so I didn't realize. I, I'd forgotten. I uh, that was available. I should have remembered that. If the committee is ready, we can turn to the senior center building on page 18 in the same section. Under purchase of services, you will see that uh, uh, the fee for elevator maintenance has gone up uh, modestly, $25. Electricity, as we know, is zeroed out here as elsewhere because it's centralized. Um, and uh, fuel oil and well you can go really right down the line and see that uh, in almost every instance it is uh, a vendor or some other non-town supplier <coughs> uh, where if there is an increase it comes from them not from uh, a claim for more money from within the town you will see in the case of um, uh, basement floor repair, a one-time uh, expenditure of 750. There's now a hazard that some tiles are uh, curling up and uh, it's easy to trip and you have osteoporotic individuals or even not uh, 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 suffering osteopenia. They, Anybody can trip and fall. Well, that's just got to get fixed, and that's a one-time expenditure. Um, um, interior exterior maintenance. Yeah. What What is that? I'm sorry. The four thousand dollars for the interior and exterior maintenance. That seems to be new. Yeah. It seems to be. New. Yes. Uh, we discussed so I looked, that. I, I yeah. Please that do to find talk out. about that. Oh. Yeah. So. The facilities coordinator that was here recently, and now she's not here with us, um, but when she was here, she had come up with the $4,000 figure based on um, things that have come up over the past year that we needed to fix, and we did not have money set aside for fixing them. So she had come up with the $4,000 um, in case of unforeseen emergencies and issues coming up with the building that we may need to have. Could you give you an example of when you said you had one this year? Um, we had a pipe break okay. in the basement and it flooded and that was quite a fun pickup we had to do. So we, we discussed this for at least two other buildings. It may have been center office, may have been here. Uh, so there, th th this is not unique to the senior center. We, we approved these when we reviewed other building budgets, uh, again, for the same logic that there, there's normal maintenance wear and tear that goes on there. We don't specifically have a line item for that. Just put it in there in case there's some level of maintenance that comes up with those 
those uh, buildings throughout the year there's there's money in a bu budget we don't need reserve fund transfers or squeeze it out of uh, some other bucket there do you happen to know what that total is because i mustn't have been here for the other buildings that were considered well, let's see no i'm talking in the entire budget i, so I think there were, i think there was only like each. like three of them that i remember each each being four thousand dollars each there is in the case of uh, under purchase of services alarm monitoring <coughs> An increase from a thousand to fourteen ten. Here is what's behind that uh, increase. The now former facilities manager, who transferred to another department, I think she is a dispatcher now or a dispatcher in training. In any event, uh, doing due diligence was comparing the del the delivery of services from various vendors with what the contract called for and discovered in this specific instance of alarm monitoring that the service delivered was not complete as called for in the contract. At the same time, the gap was not being charged for, meaning th that portion of the required delivery of service, contractually required delivery of service, was charged for but there was services to be done that weren't done and also were not charged for. Well, when the vendor was uh, required to live up to the contract and deliver all of the services and thereby start charging for all of the services, the result was an increase year to year of uh, $410. There is, I think, one other such item with there, the same the exactly control. the same history yep pass control yes thank you yep. same same concept yep uh, so subject to questions or comments by the committee and anything uh, heather may have in mind that completes the review as i understand it let me just circle back to kevin's question uh on, on page 16 the town hall budget that's one where we added $4,000 for interior exterior maintenance. Uh, page 17, center office building, we've added $4,000 for interior exterior maintenance. Um, the Who's senior the, center is, is, the is, the, is the other one. Um, about the library. The library mm -hmm. has in the past had $4,000 in a building maintenance line item that got increased to 4,500 this year. The uh, safety complex has got a repairs line item that's been level funded at 8,000 for, for several years. Um, nursery school has we throw a thousand dollars in there for repairs. Eight Brookfield Road has been level funded for repairs at 1,300 for the last several years. So it was just those three buildings where we didn't have a specific well, maintenance yeah. item that, that was recommended we added. In I can understand the logic behind why you want to do it, but this is exactly the point why we have a reserve fund. And you know, and if you're looking for like reducing the tax burden on taxpayers, uh, you know, this type of stuff, these little nickel and diamond things really do add up when you put it into five or six, five or six departments. So I, I, I don't know. I, I can understand why it's there because then you don't have to come asking for money and if it isn't if it isn't used then it just gets turned back to the general fund but if it doesn't need to be collected in the first place should it right because this is there for unexpected costs just like the reserve fund is there for unexpected oh, and unforeseen that's costs I wonder if she did have certain the facilities manager had perhaps had certain things in mind I mean I know there was the flooding, but we also repaired her. Did a, was it the floor on the second floor? On the was it the second we, floor? We did do a that whole was, we new did that floor on the second floor. I think that was before. But again, that's an, um, that's a, the perfect thing for it. So I mean, I'm just a little uncomfortable with putting these things all in there when there is a mechanism to deal with it. I can understand it's easier because now I don't have to transfer money from one part of the budget to another part of the budget. It's already here. It, it's going to handle unforeseen. For, but do we need to raise, raise those in tax funds? Raise it as tax money. Hmm. I well, think if it, if it if it meant increasing the taxes, that would be a concern. But the current tax mean. rate, no, we're not asking for an override this year. It's oh no, but it increases the ta it increases tax rate. You put it in the budget. It has to be raised by taxation. Yes. 
it, it's a direct hit on the tax rate. Anything in this point. line item budget. I'm surprised I didn't think of that. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have the facilities <laughs> manager to ask the, a, the specific question, but. Hmm. But, but you know, we do have a mechanism in place, and it is a reserve fund transfer. And you know, um, that's it's sixteen thousand dollars, you know, collectively, right? You got four thousand each in the the three buildings, and then forty five hundred for the library building um, for maintenance. That's that's sixteen k, right? My my math, right? Mm -hmm. So it does add up. And if you do have a mechanism to go before, you know, for a reserve fund transfer, the answer is not going to be no if, a, if you have a burst pipe or something like yeah. that. Um, that, that, that. I'm going to think about that. Well, I, I have a different opinion on it. <laughs> $4,000 to maintain these buildings well, is 16, not a lot of money. 16000 No, for each well, building. And if you have a burst pipe and you have to have a reverse, uh, you know, go for a transfer and call a meeting and... You know, there are situations where funds need to be available. And when you look at the totality of money that we're dealing with, 16000 is not a lot. But in the case of a burst pipe, that will be taken care of. There, there, there will be no waiting around. They're not going to let it just sit there. And, like, it, I mean, past practice, that's taken care of. And then we come and we get to reserve fund transfer and say, you know, the situation warranted that it had to be taken care of immediately. You know, burst pipe is one extreme example but I mean the the tiles I know there was a time when that lower floor of the senior center got flooded and those tiles got all warped and bent up when we did a reserve fund transfer to replace them all, all at that point in time too so I mean I, I'm, I'm kind of where, where Karen is in small amount of money I, I think if we're, we're having buildings even at home you need to expect that there's gonna be some Unplanned but yet needed maintenance needs to take place. So we should it okay. should be reflected in the budgets. Before you go, Kevin. Um, and and I, I wouldn't want to put a burden on. Well, uh, I, I need a, a, a little tiny hundred dollars here or something over here to do these small little fixes to keep keep the it's four thousand functioning. Uh, I won't do it because I don't want to go through the effort of bringing that small amount for reserve fund transfer. And then things kind of get um, you know, start falling apart, and then we have major major expenditures we take place. And there, also, so. I think it also goes to the point of micromanaging. The cost of, of <coughs> writing it up, calling the meeting, there is an employee cost associated with that. I know it's not 16000 but it is a cost. And there's also a philosophical um, side of this that we don't need to micromanage every single repair that somebody who's in the building every single day, um, that we have to have some faith that, that, that our, our, our department heads are making logical decisions. Kevin? My, my, that's not my point but I guess my point is is we're raising funds that may not be needed so if she doesn't spend any of that four thousand dollars we've raised someone's tax rate enough where they may not be able to afford something granted it doesn't seem like a lot of money but to someone that extra yeah I, you know rule of thumb is like every five or six thousand dollars is one penny on the tax rate I was just gonna say it's probably pennies yeah we're talking well, pennies well, you're talking penny in times the mill rate and then you know and now that, that's this budget there's four thousand in another budget there's four thousand in another budget there's forty five hundred in another budget it's and we pennies. have one hundred and fifty five thousand dollars set aside for unexpected consequences unexpected things in the reserve fund it's already set aside for anything that occurs like this. Well, we could offset that, that increase by using additional free cash. Assuming it wasn't used and came back, we could take another $16,000 from free cash to offset that, offset and we wouldn't be raising rate. it on, on the other end. There you go. Best of both worlds. You, would, not you, you need a rate. warrant article to do that, though. We always bring a free cash. Uh, we always have a warrant article to use some level of free cash yeah. to offset the tax rate. Yeah. We'll see what the draft warrant has for a, a, a suggested uh -huh. amount right now. And we went through that last year where there's a mountain there, and then um, between the selectmen and the finance committee, we used a higher amount because uh, we, we had available free cash and people wanted to re reduce the amount raised by taxation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in some ways, it's almost, I guess better budgeting because you're telling us what is being done. I mean, it's not specific. I, I understand that. But perhaps in years coming, 
It would be, and, and like Mike said, just like your house, these are not old, new buildings by any stretch of the man, imagination. And so, yeah, but your house always needs. Yeah, we have every year. the mechanism to take care of it already, and it's been there ever since we hit a million dollar budget. You know, it's part of the thing to have a reserve fund to deal with this. I mean, I think you're you're, you're focusing a lot on the situation like a pipe burst where there's going to be pretty substantial damage. I, I think this amount of money is more like, you know, s much smaller things, like in the hundreds of dollars that would, we, we, you could come for a reserve fund transfer, but really it, it seems like it's appropriate for department head to be able to manage that. And there's still going to be times when there's going to be significant catastrophic I, I guess I'm using it as an example, I mean, extreme as an example, but it's more of a philosophical question. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the suggestion that we didn't move the money from one barrel to this would, would solve that. But, but you don't need question. to raise it at all. You don't need to. You don't need to put the burden on anybody. I think they're making the point that there is. It is necessary because there's been historical <laughs> need for these sort of you know small repairs that, yeah. that add up over the year. Great discussion. I mean, we can always circle back if it's not four thousand. I, I think the number has to be something at zero. If you want to have a discussion, of, is, is four thousand too high? But but two thousand is the right number. Uh, we, we can have that. I think we've gone beyond a discussion on 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 right. the uh, senior center and, and council on aging here. But I mean, but, at the same time, we advocated for years for a facilities manager. And now right. she's trying to do a certain job. I know she's gone, but that perhaps was part of the job. So why don't we see where Larry's motion goes and, yeah, Larry, and, why don't you and make uh, your how motion? it plays out, at least as it relates to the, uh, the, the senior center. Don't, you know, don't, oh, don't let that fall, though. I think that's a good discussion that what Kevin brought up. I think yes, it's a very I, I a valid point. I agree with I'm all for that. If, if it matters, it absolutely will. if it matters, if I had a small something that happened where I had to spend a couple hundred bucks to fix it, but I had to go ask for the funding, I probably would be less inclined to come ask you for it and say, well, I'll hold off and see what happens. Whereas if I had, obviously if I had something big happen, obviously I'm going to go forward. But just to come bother you, to ask you for a couple hundred bucks or something like that for something that happened, I would be more likely to hold off on it see what happens but it's not a huge inconvenience by the way we had a reserve fund transfer the other day for like 200 bucks or something didn't we I mean it's not a big deal I know it, we, we, at we least it isn't for me to, I mean that's not a big deal for us it, 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 it is I think what she's saying spent, is it's a big deal for, for them but we can't it's ignore the time spent that you have to we're, we're paying a salary to you mm. we're also paying a salary to our recording and, and secretary exactly yeah. and yeah it's and, almost my bedtime <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget the chairman has to do the but uh, the and, and there's right. a timeline there here. Is, I got a problem to today, the, uh, but I got to fill out the posted. paperwork and I got to review with Barbara and yeah. we got to get the right. time right. right. All of then that. we got to schedule the the, the 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 meeting. Then we got to get the answer back and you know we couldn't have the thing fixed instead of it just lagging and lingering. Mm -hmm. And do we want to go through that headache? Yeah. So but just some, something. It's not a big deal to me. Extra five hours for the rec coordinator. You can come before us whenever you want. Yep. Okay. <laughs> That's why I'm on the committee. And, you know, I mean, this is all <laughs> yes. part of how to split the puzzle. I'll That's see part. you next you, month, yeah, same I mean, time. In, in the bottom line is these funds do not need to be raised through the tax rate. Well, Larry, let's hear Good. some motions now. <laughs> Turning to the white tab, the FinCom handbook. <coughs> I move the Finance Committee recommend to the annual town meeting for the Senior Center building the sum $27,649 as shown in line numbers 58 and 59. A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Six to one, and and uh, actually, so Kevin, while I while I fully support what you said, mm -hmm. we already approved the forty five hundred dollars for the library. So if we, we were go to go back and reconsider that too, and I'm all for that if if that's you know what has to happen. But um, at this point, I'm not going to further you know beat a dead horse here with this committee, but. Perhaps next year's budget, it's just something that we bring up and just and just make a decision to say either yes or no across the board. I absolutely 
I would, I would also that. suggest that maybe we ask these departments that we're funding that next it. year they tell us what they use the money for and get an idea of how much they're actually using. Maybe well, 4000 is not what's needed. Maybe 2000 is a closer figure. Which is why we see the, the weekly reports from the town accountant. I agree. It should be in there. And would you like to do the, uh, the Council on Aging? Uh, yes. You will note that there is a discrepancy. It may not be nothing more than a, uh, a typo somehow. But in, on page 34 in the green tab, the total is 144,651. But in the white tab, the, the total is 144,351. I would. No, it's 144, 350. No, you have to look at the administrator's yeah. recommendation. It's 351. Because there was a difference between oh, requests. Forgive me, I was yeah. flipping back and forth. It's I hard went sometimes to the wrong to flip column. back and forth. Yeah, right. Thank you. Um, I move the Finance Committee recommend to the annual town meeting for the Council on Aging the sum $144,351. Uh, as reflected in line items 107 through 111 inclusive. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? 7-0. Thank you for coming out, Heather. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Heather. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. So, so I don't want to keep that conversation over. If someone wants to go back and check with Barbara as to where the four thousand dollar amounts came from, uh, if they're based on what it was, and if we want to have a discussion, a re rethink some lower number but not zero, I'm, I'm okay with that at, at an upcoming meeting. Or if we want to just leave it and see where we land and make adjustments next year, we could do it that way as well. As the as the liaison, I'll, I'll take that. Are you me meeting with Barbara on it? Are you hardly using Yeah. Oh, sorry. Because I was going to say, um, I'm going to see if I can go talk with her on another subject. I'm happy to do it as well. But we by, by all means. <laughs> OK, um, moving on to any other review of the FY 2020 budget. I don't know if everyone got this. It was somewhat later that I sent it out that um, I think it was a couple meetings ago, there was a question on um, whether the nursery school and Brookfield Road were correct. We voted the nursery school. We didn't vote uh, Brookfield Road. And it turns out that the supplies um, should be zero for Brookfield Road. We haven't voted that, so we can take that out. But the, there should be supplies of 350 in the nursery school, so we would have to reconsider and re vote that. So sorry, can you, so can you say that again? So nursery <laughs> school has to be reconsidered? Right, because it didn't have the supplies of 350. They were in eight Brookfield Road, and that's supposed to be oh, zero. Uh, we didn't right. vote Brookfield Road yet. Right. Um, but we did vote um, the nursery school. So it would probably be a good idea to take care of those before we. So do you want a motion to reconsider the nursery school yes, budget? Yes, please. I will so move that. Second. So the nursery school is going to be 2350 Right. So, okay, so let's do the motion, yep. vote on the motion to reconsider. All in favor of reconsidering the nursery school? You know, the, the motion could only be made by someone who was on the prevailing side. All right, let's see that. <coughs> okay. Oh, oh, I think that was a, wait a minute, it was 6-0. I, six six zero. 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 Six I have 6-0. Zero. Zero. So everybody yeah. was. So everybody was on the prevailing side. And you can only vote if you took part in the original vote. No. What was, it, what was the no, Which is reconsidered is open to the old floor. Okay. Yeah. Can he vote on a reconsideration well, motion? So. I shouldn't be wasn't I here. So. No, oh. no. Like, I can't vote Let's on the motion. Let's make sure that I was right. there, right? Right. So that's what I'm saying. Right. But, 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 you, know, yeah, but when, when it comes to the actual vote, gotcha. yeah. the new vote, the new the new vote. vote. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure I was there, but let me just double check. I'm pretty sure. So yeah. why is 350 going from April Field Road to here? They just had it in the wrong place. Flipped. So what 350 is moving? The supplies. Out of Brookfield Road supplies. The night we were doing right those, well, that's coming why we did not vote. Barbara paused and yeah. thought that there was something wrong, and that's why we didn't vote right. Brookfield Road and said she'd get back to us. 
So until she got back to us. Just, just another highlight there. There's another line item that's going to be added. Is it, I was there. Yes. Yes. Oh yes. My goodness. Supplies. She's got the line, but she didn't give a number. She didn't to give it, it a number. She did not. I mean, but she has to give it a number. Code. In she has the line with no number. We're just going to move it up there. With no number. All right, so let's get that reconsideration motion. I was there. It's valid. Okay. Does anybody else know who they weren't there without me looking at that? I was here. It was April 2nd. I seconded it. It was April 2nd. I think we April 2nd. Was Larry here? I don't know. All right, I'll go look. I don't know. I even have April 2nd. April. Larry wasn't here, Kevin wasn't here, and Darren wasn't here. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are awesome. <laughs> Save this. There's going to be four of us voting. So four voting. So okay, all in. Is that enough? All in. Yeah. Okay. The quorum's here. Yeah, okay. Anything quorum. we do is valid. Yeah, once you have a quorum, it's gotcha. whatever with it. So all in favor of reconsidering. Uh, that's four opposed, abstaining. So you three would abstain. So four, zero, three. And that's Jared. Kevin Clary. So is there a motion now to <coughs> increase the budget of the nursery school or ha have the budget be 2350 Or adding in the supplies? Adding in the supplies of $350. In, in, in what exactly are those supplies of $350? Crayons. <laughs> <laughs> <That's operations. laughs> <That's operations. laughs> That was sarcasm, That's Kevin. <laughs> You've got the nursery school budget. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I am not aware. Well, we just found that out today. We, uh, I'm sorry. It was 350 bucks. Sure. Yes. 350. Yes. Well, we could vote on that next time. Is well, no, well, it's in right? a Brookfield world, it says supplies for repairs. So this is another that one. Was that, mistake, that, that was a mistake, Kevin. That was a mistake. There, there no, are no, no, no supplies. I'm just saying, does that same explanation hold true when it goes to nursery school? Well, I'm going to suspect the nursery school needs paper. Well, no, 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 that's, that's part of the oh, operations. Okay. okay. We only own, we own the building. We don't run the Oh, business. this is for the building itself. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I, I believe, believe generally I put it in two thousand. I was talking supplies. about this line item having been put in the wrong one. So it was my uh, recollection is it's related to repairs, but it got put in a wrong. It got put in in Aprilfield Road versus Nursery School, and, and that's what she's trying to correct is move supplies for repairs of three fifty to Aprilfield Road. Uh, well, let's excuse see me, what to it the says Nursery for Brookfield Road for that. I know that they they do their own snow removal. Uh, you know, for the sidewalk and things. It's not what that's for. No. No. This was supplies for repairs in the It was for road. repairs. So I think yeah. it's probably supplies. For I have repairs. it as repairs. That's, I have it as repairs as well from April 2nd. Hmm. Do you want to hold off? Sure. We could hold off on it. Oh, but I'll find out. Yeah, or, yeah, let's, let's, yeah, well, you've got the See, budget, right? You do, right? You can still. Oh. Yeah, no, no. Now it's just open again. It's not voted yeah, on. It's yeah. right. I'll find out exactly what the. Uh, then we, yeah. could, we could vote on April Field Road, though, however, because we're taking that out. Yeah. Well, let me go back. We'll just wait. April. So we'll just wait for, for Jared then, right? Yeah. yeah. So that you the reconsideration. Yeah. But the tomorrow. reconsideration is. It's good. It's still good. Okay. So we could just immediately go to vote on the budget. Perfect. So this is we're looking at a Brookfield Road then. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the thirteen hundred dollars there is, is is sort of equivalent to the four thousand dollars that was in the senior center. It's there for any unforeseen expenses, so they don't have to come to the reserve fund. I think they've had that. They've had some small amount in there for several years now. If you look across the yeah, but the, you know. years, but yeah. Yes, I believe it is for some sort of repairs, yes, if, if need be, broken window or who knows what. And that's happening. And I'm times. sure that's happening because yeah. it's going to be building. Mm -hmm. Would anybody like to make a motion for eight Brook Road for 1350 Or 1300 sorry. Who has that budget? My eyes are going. I'll make that motion. 
Well, I'll second it because That's actually Jared's I think this is, this is reasonable. Yeah, why don't you do it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jared can do it. What? What, what, what line item is it? I'm sorry. Uh, 65. 65. That's going to be Jared. I was on the detailed budget. I'll get there. <clears throat> All right, I uh, motion that the Finance Committee recommend to town meeting funding 8 Brookfield Road, line 65, and... So it's just $1,300. Thir thir yeah, for $1,300. Yes. That was their second. Second. Any further discussion or any discussion? All in favor? So that's 7 zero. So crossing the supplies out, thirteen hundred. Moving it to so I'll I'll do the um I'll change the file, Kathy. Okay. No. All right, so I better write myself mean, you'll, a note. You'll that change we yours to, uh, for the minutes. So. I'll write myself a note that we have to do this on Thursday, or maybe Jared will remember. <laughs> you wrote it down. Wrote it down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, anything else on the uh, 2020 budget at this point in time? I did see that you have these education scheduled for the 16th. Yes, for the next Tuesday, yes. It's still up in the air where we're actually meeting. Uh, right now it's in conference room two, but because Which they're one's not. That? That, one that one that one? Because they're not sure if the board of selectmen is meeting that night. I don't know if you have they're any. The 16th or not? Oh, you're not? Oh, okay, I can change it then. Yeah. Ah, because somebody told me today that they weren't <clears throat> sure. Yeah, I think next week's Holy Week. Well, it's, well, it Monday's Patriot's Day, so that's why it would have gotten bumped to Tuesday. Yeah, I think they said one day for the next week. Okay. Well, I can, I can change it. It is, I think it's posted already. I did send it to the town clerk. Is next Monday Patriot's Day? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. You're out yep. in training for the marathon? Spring. And it's bring, it's school vacation week as well. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, school vacation week, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. Okay, it sneaks up on you. It does. It does. Right? And I'm not sure when we're getting the awards, but that is mid-April next week. <laughs> I did put that on the agendas for next week in case. So, is there anything else on the 2020 budget? So, Jeff, sir, Slugman meet. They're meeting tomorrow. tomorrow on the right? on the wire, right? On yeah. The wire. Yes. Oh, there. Okay. I would expect. Soon. Actually, let's take a quick run through on these sure. budgets. Let's go. Like Kevin used to do. Mm -hmm. Now we haven't done uh, economic development. Yeah, is I he, reached out to Kevin. Is he coming before us? Well, he was going to come, I think, with the STA stuff. And, okay. Oh, and, and police is Thursday. We don't have him scheduled yet, though. No. Yeah. Well, I was waiting on the warrants. And education, yeah. we haven't voted. Police is Thursday, right? I worry, are you starting oh, right board of health. Hmm? We've done board of selectmen? Yeah, yes. we've done everything up okay. to economic development. Okay. Um, re recycling with, well, board of health is coming Thursday as well, so that will get done. Up to economic development. That's Thursday as well, correct? Because I met, that's where I, okay. School. All right, did we do library operations? Yes. Yeah. No, we didn't because of the, um, we didn't? Of the change oh, yeah. in the um, we did not the hours. That was you. That's right. right. Yes. Right. So we, we gave Jeff until uh, later this it's week. It's a matter of uh, a coordinator. Because Jeff was also going to be looking at that too. Uh, uh, on Thursday, I believe. Uh, that's right. Okay. All right. And otherwise, I think we have the assessors and the town administrators' budgets to do yet. No. no. No, we did those both. We did those. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't here, Larry. We yep, we by. did it on 328 for the uh, administrator. You did it without moi? <laughs> there was an evening where there was only five of us, and they were, they were going <laughs> now quick. Now the 26th. <laughs> yeah, we powered through. Hey. We wait for no one. If we have a quorum, we go. Rock and roll. Enough. <laughs> No, I think we're caught up. We circle okay. back and discuss some items that you know got got passed on night when people were in here and didn't get a chance to weigh in. But. Well, and then that's up to them to move for reconsideration if they want to talk about it. So, so, so sorry. Um, during, it looks like 
the ones that we just went over that are, are not voted will be voted will we well we have Thursday. well we have police and health coming Thursday and we have education coming Tuesday so sure. next Tuesday okay. so then the um, sorry the economic development are you going to wait until the warrant comes out or do you want well, to go it's, ahead uh, it's, we could probably do it who though. has that I have them. I reached out to Kevin. I'm waiting to hear. And Penny, I have to her too. Well, that's CPC. That's all right. That's all warranted. Yeah. Yeah. And we could probably do economic development because basically what they did was. Right. They it used it, to be fully funded by STA, and I believe right. they just split it in half. Who has the debt service? No, I voted that. Um, okay, then I have a question. You do? I can take it up to new business if you want. Well, probably the oh, old business. Well, well, no, it's under 2020 Keep budget. We have budget. What do you want? So, I guess uh, j just uh, you know, this year we actually, from debt service, cut revenue. Where do we reflect that revenue, right? Because we got almost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in state reimbursement for the high school from Cantasqua. Yeah, this is one of the last two. This is one of the last two years where you know, in paying for Cantasqua, they're actually paying us. So, you know that come up before because I think this is about maybe the second or third year that yeah it's happened. only like two or three years it happens and it's I forget right. how she how Barbara did that I don't I, I would have maybe I, I know it would, would look strange and reflect a negative number in here I was just curious where it got reflected I almost want to say it was in revenue yeah but we don't show revenue anymore. no yeah. well in the since that's also on liaison I will add it to my list of questions for Barbara I, I remember when it first came up she wasn't I mean before we even got the money she wasn't <laughs> sure how she was doing it and I don't remember now how she did it okay yeah See, I didn't realize you missed so many meetings coming so well, what, I missed one <laughs> 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 so when you so that uh, the debt services because uh, what what are we getting paid for we, we, we it, borrowed 20 something million dollars 20 years ago yeah in the last three years of the repayment we we're actually getting paid money back instead of paying principal we're I think it was a way that um, SBA was structured. doing it that they don't do anymore that that, yeah but, but, but still that. but that's the way ours was structured yes. yeah but you're saying this doesn't happen this isn't something that's going to happen every year no, oh, no, no it's almost, no. almost done no but but it should be something I would have thought would have been reflected somewhere because really we're getting paid back money. So maybe it is in the revenue side of the house, and that's fine. I was just I thought I saw it actually at one reflected. point. I thought I saw it when I was going through revenue once. But I'm, I'm sure I can't put my hands on it right now. It's, you know, it's not a, any type of point to fight over. It's a point of curiosity more than anything else. Well, I don't know that I could find it off the top of my head here. Because that's also, Joni, to go to your point, that's two hundred and fifty odd thousand dollars in revenue this year. That is definitely not going to be there next year. Right. Well, it's concerning. Although Lester just got about two hundred thousand dollars for their first tax payment, oh, yeah. and I wanted that to be known to everybody who voted no. Yeah. <laughs> Northampton got even a lot more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. And that was, I, I think, just the, the first quarter, right? It was the first, the first quarter, quarterly tax payment, yes. Yeah, not bad. Actually, in Lester's case, I thought it was the first month that they- Oh, it might have been, I, I don't know. Yeah, so that's like huge, you know? All right, I'm just looking, now you have me curious. I don't know, so since that's, Exclusively Tantasqua, would it be in there? Somehow in there, but there. I don't know. So, I, 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 well, usually we pay debt and out of our debt. But yeah. yeah. I know that uh, at the Saturday meeting, you know, Barbara went through all of, mm -hmm. you know, her thesis here. And she did mention that the, um, you know, like the, the bullet here for the education costs and how it ate up the new revenues. I wonder, would it not net out? The, co the cost in the education? Well, I'm sure we'll find you know out soon saying? because she, she's probably listening and so she'll <laughs> let us. You'll get an email tonight. <laughs> but you're writing that one down too? Yep, this, well, uh, debt services for everybody, where is yeah, it accounted for? Yeah. Jared's gonna be working tomorrow for us. <laughs> All right. Um, 
no reserve fund transfers meeting minutes we do have a couple did people have a chance to read them from last week anybody have a chance to read them that's jim's job know, he's the one who catches Jim. everything yes, I read them. he's at the baseball I, game okay. <laughs> yeah did we win uh, today no oh we did it was embarrassing oh we didn't win oh oh my gosh you saw a very rare play they Toronto actually stole home. Oh, no, I had to oh. watch the Man City Tottenham Spurs game. It was way more important than Boston. All right, are we ready to do the, the minutes or do you want to wait till Thursday? <laughs> I haven't looked at them, so I wouldn't end up abstaining. How many people have actually looked at them and are ready to go forward? I read them. I read them. You read them? Mm -hmm. You read them? No. Let's give it to them. I truly rely on Jim oh. and Larry for the minutes. <laughs> oh, you weren't there for some oh. <laughs> All right, we'll do it on Thursday. I won't be here, but I'll show you. Oh, that's why. Oh, oh so. now we know why. All right, well, Eddie. Well, I already know she did a good job. They're very thorough. All right, any new business? Old business. Remember, we've been here since 6.30, so if you think we're leaving early, we're probably early now. It's been two hours. Yeah. Public access. You're the only public show. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All in favor? 8.30. Thank you. I'm sorry. Who was it? I was.